Welcome to the Short Span Steel Bridge Alliance's 2020 topic based video series. In this series, we'll review basic concepts and ideas pertinent not only to engineers new to short span steel bridge design, but those looking for a refresher in fundamental concepts. In this video, we'll discuss the basics of limit states and LRFD principles. The goals of this video will be to introduce the basics of limit state design and how engineers design and detail bridges as well as to familiarize yourself with principles related to short span steel bridge design. A brief outline will begin by discussing the basic goals of structural design and investigate the differences between two design philosophies, namely allowable stress design and LRFD. We'll then get into a more specific discussion of reliability and LRFD limit states, mainly the four classes of limit states, that being strength, service, fatigue, and those related to extreme events. Finally, I'll identify two relevant resources in case you're interested in further study. So to begin our discussion, a good place would be to look at the goal of structural design. Our primary goal when we design structures is to size our members and components of the system to adequately and safely sustain the loads that they're subjected to. And so a question might be, well, how do you actually do that? Most of the audience for this video is going to be familiar with basic mechanics and physics, but how do we reliably and accurately ensure that the structures that we design are safe? That begets the use of a design philosophy. In engineering practice today, there are two main philosophies that are used, one of them being allowable stress design or allowable strength design, a concept with which most engineers are familiar. The other would be LRFD which is the primary philosophy used in most structural applications today. To explain these philosophies, we'll begin by discussing allowable stress design. It's a more historic method of structural design and involves the use of safety factors that are primarily based on experience and engineering judgment. So to keep things simple, let's consider a member in a structure, such as a beam or a column or a connection. Let's say that it has a computed or nominal capacity of 100 kips. In other words, when you get past 100 kips, that's when the member would experience failure. So at that point, an engineer might then employ a factor of safety. Let's say that that value is 2. That would mean that it would have an allowable capacity or an allowable strength of 50 kips. That's what a factor of safety serves to do. Whether it's reducing the capacity or amplifying the loads, it's essentially performing the same function. It introduces a level of safety into your design by creating a buffer between what you compute as the capacity and what you're allowed to use as the designer. While it is simple, there are some significant disadvantages of ASD that can be accounted for with more refined methods. Now the main disadvantages of ASD is that it really doesn't consider uncertainties associated with design. There are some significant uncertainties that we see as structural engineers, not just on the side of loads, but on the side of resistances as well. For example, if we look at resistances, there's always going to be statistical uncertainties associated with material quality, fabrication tolerances, construction practices, etc. There's also going to be uncertainties associated with the loads. For example, Structural engineers are going to be far more accurate in estimating dead loads on a structure or loads related to a structure's self-weight than they are the live loads on a structure, such as the weight of the truck traffic. And so allowable stress design doesn't really account for these uncertainties, but load and resistance factor design, or LRFD, does. That's the main advantage of LRFD. It accounts for these statistical uncertainties through the use of reliability-based methods. During this lecture series, we won't delve too far into the math, but we want to provide some very high-level concepts. So we're going to do that through the use of normal distributions, or the bell curve, which most engineers uh, are familiar with. We can look at structural design from two sides of the equation. The resistance, or how much the given element can withstand before it fails, uh, and then the loads, or how much force or action we're applying to the structure. We can then model each of these as statistical variables. One way of thinking about this 
is to consider that a bunch of identical components were all taken to the lab and failed one by one. Even if they were identically designed, there's always going to be some scatter with the data. Using measures such as the mean or the standard deviation, you can then model that scatter with the probability distribution. In this example, we have two distributions, the probability uh, distribution representing the resistance and the probability distribution representing the loads. When looking at a design scenario, obviously you would want the resistances to be larger than the loads, hence why the resistance curve is on the right. But the key observation is that they're on average larger than the loads. There are some instances where the loads are larger than the resistances, if you're looking at this from a probability distribution standpoint. With loads and resistances modeled separately, we could then develop a new curve modeled by the system function, or the resistances minus the loads, as shown in this slide. This curve provides a simple illustration of structural safety. Any time that this equation is greater than zero, that would mean that the resistances are larger than the loads. Therefore, the structure is safe because it has more strength than the load it's being subjected to. But because probability distributions go on forever, there are going to be instances where the loads are larger than the resistance and the structure is unsafe. So with allowable stress design, we cannot guarantee uniform levels of safety. But with LRFD, that's how specifications are calibrated. In LRFD, the goal is to manage the probability of failure, which is the shaded area under the curve where the structure would be unsafe. The idea is that there is no structure that's perfectly safe, but what we can do is ensure that we are designing structures with uniform levels of safety and uniform probabilities of failure. The way that's achieved is through calibration, trying to manage this term beta, or what's called the reliability index. In reliability theory, beta is arguably one of the most important values that, that's discussed because the idea is to calibrate load combinations to ensure that you achieve a uniform target level of beta. As a practicing engineer, you'll never use beta or these terms directly, but the idea is that by understanding how these terms are calibrated and understanding these concepts, you'll have a better understanding of what LRFD is accomplishing in structural design. When employing LRFD, we modify the nominal loads and resistance by safety cal or by statistically calibrated factors. For example, resistances are multiplied by resistance factors or phi values to obtain factored resistances. And loads are similarly multiplied by load factors to obtain factored loads. Now, instead of lumping all the loads together before factoring, we typically keep them separate. This differentiates the uncertainties associated with each load component. For example, as previously discussed, dead loads and live loads have different uncertainties, so we use separate load factors. We then combine these loads using statistically calibrated load combinations. The goal is always to test your design against the following relationship. If the factored resistance is greater than your specified load combination, your girder is safe to employ. An example of a load combination is shown below. Strength 1 is the condition of the bridge which relates to normal vehicular use. Isolating the load components most common to short span steel bridge design, we have the load combination shown below, where DC is the dead load of the structural components and non-structural attachments, DW is the dead load of the wearing surface and utilities, and LL plus IM is the vehicular load model combined with dynamic load allowance. ASHTO LRFD specifications also currently employ ADA factors to account for ductility, redundancy, and operational importance. However, in most cases, these values can be taken to be 1. The strength 1 load combination on the previous slide refers to a, a condition critical to a bridge's safety. In structural engineering, we term this condition a limit state. A limit state is a condition of a structure beyond which it no longer fulfills the relevant design criteria. There are four classes of limit states pertinent to uh, short span steel bridge design, those being strength limit states, service limit states, fatigue and fracture limit states, and those limit states related to extreme events. Strength limit states are taken to ensure that a bridge has enough strength and stability to resist the load combinations that it's expected to experience in its design life. 
These limit states are statistically calibrated using reliability-based methods previously discussed. Service limit states, however, are taken as restrictions on stress, deformation, and crack width under regular service conditions. Unlike strength limit states, these contain experience-related provisions that cannot always be derived from statistic, uh, statistical modeling. Fatigue and fracture limit states are taken as restrictions on stress ranges and are intended to limit crack growth under repetitive loads and to prevent fracture during the design life of the bridge. We'll discuss fatigue in more detail in a separate video. Finally, extreme event limit states are taken to ensure the structural survival of a bridge during a major event, such as an earthquake or flood or when collided by a foreign object, such as a vessel, vehicle, or ice flow. These are considered to be unique occurrences whose return of period may be significantly greater than the design life of the bridge. We've included some great resources in case you're interested in further study. First, a chapter uh, from the Steel Bridge Design Handbook published by the National Steel Bridge Alliance. The link for this chapter is provided below. Also, uh, the Barker and Puckett text on the design of highway bridges is a valuable resource and contains uh, more specific detail on, on limit states. That concludes our, our lecture in this uh, SSSBA topic-based video series. We hope you found this enjoyable and we look forward to you joining us in our next video. Thank you very much.